Hello and welcome to the episode 219 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The Quarrymen's first performance at the Cavern Club, a visit to the US capital of psychedelic drugs and an attempt to record Not Guilty, are among the highlights of today's episode. On the 7th of August 1957, the Quarrymen, John Lennon's skiffle band, performed at the Cavern Club for the first time. Back in 1957, the venue was owned by Alan Sittner, and it was one of the jazz venues in Liverpool. Paul McCartney, while technically already in the band, did not perform with them, because he was away at the scout camp. On the other hand, Quarryman banjo player Rod Davis maintained in a 2011 radio interview that the concert took place before the end of July, as he was away in France for a holiday for the whole August 1957. Fast forward to 1961, and we find the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performing at the Litterland Town Hall in Liverpool. Double feature at the Cavern Club in 1962, with the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best, performing a lunchtime and an evening concert in the cellar in Matthew Street. And we can complete the live appearances of the day with an engagement in 1963. The Beatles, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums, were at the Springfield Barroom in St. Saviour, Jersey, for the second of five Channel Islands nights booked by promoter John Smith. In 1967, George and Patty Harrison, Beatles' assistant Neil Aspinall, Derek Taylor and Alexis Mardas arrived in San Francisco to visit Patty's sister Jenny, who was living in the city. During their visit, they had a walk in the district of Hague Ashbury, renowned at the time for being full of hippies. It was the obviously unofficial LSD capital of the state, with members of Jefferson Airplane and Grateful Dead living there, along with Janis Joplin and other members of the counterculture. The party took acid before going, but it wasn't an entirely nice experience. Naturally, people recognized George and started following him. On Beatlesbible.com, Patty Harrison is quoted saying, We were expecting Hate Ashbury to be special, a creative and artistic place filled with beautiful people, but it was horrible, full of ghastly dropouts, bums and spotty youths, all out of their brains. Everybody looked stoned, even mothers and babies, and they were so close behind us, they were treading on the backs of our heels. It got to the point where we couldn't stop for fear of being trampled. They looked at us expectantly, as if George was some kind of messiah. Harrison did his best to interact with the crowd, but when he refused to take some STP with an unknown member of the group, people became more hostile and the party decided to reach their limousine and leave before anything worse could happen. The whole affair turned George Harrison off psychedelic drugs for good. As he says in the anthology book, it certainly showed me what was really happening in the drug culture. It wasn't what I'd thought, spiritual awakenings and being artistic. It was like alcoholism, like any addiction. It made me realize this is not it. And that's when I really went for the meditation. One year later, in 1968, the Beatles returned to the EMI Studios after the parentheses at the Trident Studios. Between 3 and 7.45 pm, the focus was on transferring the Hey Jude mono mix completed yesterday on an Abbey Road tape machine. Then, from 8.45 pm until 5.30 am, the band worked on George Harrison's Not Guilty, recording 46 takes of the rhythm track, only five of which were complete. George played guitar, John electric piano, Paul bass and Ringo drums. One of the takes of the song was released in 1996 with the Anthology 3 album, but despite putting further work on it, 
The Beatles didn't seem to believe in the song enough to ever release it. You can imagine that, with only one take of While My Guitar Gently Weeps completed in the ten weeks of work on the new album, while some of John's and Paul's songs had received multiple remakes, this attitude didn't exactly sit well with George, adding fuel to the tension that had been rising during the sessions. But let's stop a second before moving to the last story of the episode. Allow me to ask you to please share this episode with your friends, if you liked it. I will also point you at www.simonmas.com support, if you fancy, as you should, doing something to support the creation of more music-related projects from yours truly. If you don't find the content that useful or interesting, then you might drop me a line and tell me what I could improve. See? There's always something you can do to improve music content on the internet. On the 7th of August 1969, between 2.30 and 6 pm, Come Together was mixed in stereo in EMI Studio 2. The mix took 10 attempts to be perfected, and during the course of the procedure, ADT, automatic double tracking, was added to John's vocals in the choruses. Then, moving to Studio 3, Paul, George and John recorded vocals and guitar solos on the end, between 6 pm and midnight. Why, I guess this brings today's episode to its end. Tomorrow, we'll talk about one of the most iconic photographs of the Beatles. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.